Hello, I'm Dan. Welcome back to the continuation of my complete vinyl collection series. We are getting close to the end. We have, I think, two more videos to do, including this one. We're going to continue on from the mid-70s, backwards in time. This is the farthest back we've been in the room because I wanted to be right next to the shelf if I can pull them off and put them back right away. So let's get back into it. I got this one pretty early on and have kept the copy from then. It's Boston, of course, 1976, with the classic More Than a Feeling. This copy has some ring wear and it's a little, little worn out on the record as well, but this is one of the first records I think I ever got in my initial 50 cent digs. So that I'll probably just hang on to indefinitely. The other Rush album that I have, the classic 2112 from 1976. Gary Burton Quintet, Dreams So Real. Another excellent release on ECM. You got Pat Metheny and Steve Swallow in that quintet, which is excellent. Black Market from Weather Report, 1976. Best of the Doobies, Volume 1. This is where it's at. Grover Washington Jr. on Motown. This is a secret place. Probably one of the most commonly seen from John Clemmer. Barefoot Ballet from 76. And two from Earl Clue on Blue Note. This is self-titled. And Living Inside Your Love. Some of the early probably better musically overall from Earl Clue. He's great. Mahavishnu Orchestra, Visions of the Emerald Beyond, 1975. Forest of Feelings from David Sanchez, who I talked about in the last one. Really killer stuff. And probably the most well-known from John Clemmer, Touch. This is the MoFi edition. 1975. Synergy. This is another one that was sent to me from Mark, Dr. Deadwax. And I hadn't known about this really before then. Passport Records. This is a cool one from Sonny Stitt. It's called Dumpy Mama. This is a gold stamp promo. This is on Flying Dutchman. I don't really have much from them, but I know that's been a, a popular one in the VC. I got this in Seattle. Collection came from a radio station. And this was the first Sunny State record that I found. It's a double LP compilation called Genesis from his early stuff. Put out on Prestige. It's another Return to Forever with Chick Corea, Where Have I Known You Before? 1974. John Clemmer Waterfalls. It's an interesting cover. ABC Records. The Champ. Sonny Stitt. I might have showed this in my first VC video 10 years ago. This is a radio broadcast LP. It's Superman Volume 2. And this is still sealed. I've never opened this. So I'm not you know, really sure what's on here. But I do love Superman. And I found that for a few dollars. Got a copy of Mingus Moves. This is a promotional copy. I think I got that for about 10 bucks. Even though this is all chronological, I mean, this is basically the, the jazz section at this point in time. Magic and Movement from John Clemmer on ABC Impulse. And right after that, Fresh Feathers. This is one of the only, if not the only, record that I bought while I was in New York 10 years ago. I went around to a few stores, but I didn't really have the capacity to take much with me. But I saw this and grabbed it. This is uh, Keith Jarrett, several other people. It's called Belonging on ECM. A lot of those ECM records I got for 3 to $5. I have quite a few of them. We got an earlier George Benson, Take 5. Of course, the classic Dave Brubeck track. 
This one's on CTI, as well as that uh, Stanley Turrentine compilation that I showed very recently. We got Grover Sings the Blues. This is something that I had on cassette tape and played over and over again when I was very young. So that was kind of a nostalgic find. We got Soul Box from Grover Washington Jr. on Kudu, which is a CTI subsidiary. It's a great box set. We got a copy of Houses of the Holy, Led Zeppelin. It's the only Led Zeppelin LP that I have. And this is a Columbia House pressing. But back then, sometimes that was a good thing. And I think in this case it is. Probably my favorite Zeppelin album, but I gotta be honest, I, I don't have a deep history or knowledge of Zeppelin. We got Love, Devotion, Surrender from Santana and John McLaughlin. Another compilation, this one's on Cadet for Sonny Stitt. This is I Cover the Waterfront. I like that cover. The classic Diodato record. This is Prelude on CTI. It's an excellent one. You'll know the song that is on this if, when you hear it. Crystal Silence from Gary Burton and Chick Corea again. Great team up. ECM. Intensity from John Clemmer. Another one that I found at Amoeba years ago. Piano Man from Billy Joel. I think that's the last I have of him. The self-titled America record. I almost got rid of this, but decided against it. One of Sonny Stitt's better albums from his later period. This is 12 on Muse. Constant Throb from John Clemmer. The further back you go with him, I think, the better the, the jazz ABC impulse. And Tune Up from Sonny Stitt on Cobblestone. Highly regarded. Original pressing on that one. Stephen Stills, Manassas, another one that I found in the 50 cent section, decided to hang on to. I did get a copy of The Who, Tommy. Got this for like eight bucks years ago. Again, not super into The Who. You know, classic rock is just something for me that I didn't have a history of a connection to growing up. So bands like Zeppelin and The Who, they just don't have that special place for me that they do for a lot of people. I understand why they do. Uh, this is One-Eyed Dog from James Taylor. This is a great record. 1972. That looks like a cool place to be in that studio. This is a reissue from a few years back of Volume 4. Black Sabbath. It's cut from the original tape. And I've seen on Discogs that it, this one keeps going up in value. It was really well done. And I Seems to be harder to come by now. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a great version of this record. Constellation on Cobblestone. Sunny Stitt, 1972. This is one of my favorites. Black Vibrations, also from 72. This is a white label promo. This was kind of expensive when I got it, but uh, it's definitely worth it. It's an excellent record. Mississippi John Hurt, Last Sessions. Love this guy. This is a RSD from 2012, there's only a thousand of those. Gary Burton and Stéphane Grappelli, Paris Encounter, 1972. You got Jimi Hendrix in the West. I think there's, if I remember correctly, there's different versions of this. I got this for like five bucks. This was a gift that I really appreciate. It's a copy of What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. This is a back to black pressing. Pretty great. Ah. A very special one. I do have this box set edition of Pink Moon by Nick Drake. Really, really well done. You got the gatefold there. Copies of handwritten lyrics. Original shop poster. Got all the release notes on the mastering and everything. I love this record. I love Nick Drake. I've talked about that quite a bit. And uh, yeah, this was spendy and it's the only box set version of the reissues that I have. But man, it sounds really, really good. Another Rhino reissue 
cut from the original tape, Master of Reality. Excellent pressing. I have an Antilles 70s pressing of Nick Drake, Brighter Later, which I managed to get for $20 years ago, and a reissue from around the same time as the Pink Moon. It looks a lot different. Sounds pretty good. It's made from a copy of the original tape, whereas Pink Moon was made from the original. A very decent reissue, but I usually listen to the 70s original. Got Sunship, John Coltrane. This is a really killer record. It just it just comes out hot. It's fantastic. It's one of the only uh, non-Atlantic Coltrane records that I have, and it's one of the only uh, original pressings I have of Coltrane. Uh, West Montgomery, the previously unreleased recordings. It's called Just Walkin' on Merv. I got a lot of West Montgomery coming up. Another Rhino reissue, Black Sabbath, 1970. Also fantastic. And what I think is a good pressing of Bitches Brew, Miles Davis. This is a Sony Legacy 180 gram pressing. And you gotta be in the right headspace. I, well, at least I do to listen to this. And if you are, it's a fantastic experience. And if you're not, you might just get a little weirded out. But it is phenomenal. And I'm now realizing that I have these two Black Sabbath albums from 1970 out of order. But this is Paranoid. And I went with a NEMS or NEMS reissue that's on clear vinyl. And I think that's because I had read something about like tape dropout on the Warner Brothers reissue. For some reason, this seemed like the better choice. And I do remember it sounding quite good. I don't know if, if it's, you know, the all analog experience that you want. I don't think it is, but it's pretty good nonetheless. All the Children Cried, John Clemmer on Cadet Records. It's 1970. We've got a Greatest Hits from West Montgomery. It's nice to have around. And I think we're moving at a pretty decent pace. And there is two more cubes to show, and I only want to do one more video after this. So I think I'll go ahead and show another handful before we wrap up today. I did a random records video on this To The Moon box set. It's got a book, and several records. It was from Time Life. It's a really nice set. I still don't think I've ever listened to it, but it's really, really neat. I'll leave a link to that video if you want to see more about that. Band of Gypsies from Hendrix, 1970. It's another one that I found. It's definitely less than $10. This is a pretty recent edition. Tony Matola, 1970. Guitar for Lovers. That turned out pretty well. I liked it. Eruptions, John Clemmer on Cadet. Pretty rad, 1970. George Benson, The Other Side of Abbey Road on CTI. It's 1969. And I only have this edition of Five Leaves left. It's the Antilles 70s pressing. A little bit different back cover. Sounds really good though. And again, it's like $20 when I found it years ago, which was a great price then and an amazing price now. I did try the reissue, but that one wasn't worth keeping to me. I mean, I have at least two different CD versions. I also currently have it on tape, but this is the go-to and what an excellent record it is. Little Green Apples, Sunny Stitt. This is an early uh, Unipack gatefold. First James Taylor, 1968 on Apple Records. Had a great pressing of Odyssey and Oracle by the Zombies. This is, I think, the 30th anniversary issue, or at least a, a pressing of that version. It says Locker is cut directly from analog tapes. It's an excellent version, in my opinion. Willow Weep for Me by Wes Montgomery. This is a German pressing of the Verb album, 68. Down here on the ground from Montgomery, CTI. These have really cool covers. Okay, 
of old jackets. There's another one, Road Song, also from 68. The French Touch made it into the collection. I showed this not too long ago when I originally found it. It's a phase four recording. Actually ended up being enjoyable. Another John Clemmer, and We Were Lovers. That is not him on the cover. It's an interesting one. There he is. Bookends, Simon and Garfunkel. I do have the poster in there. Solar Heat from Cal Jader. Didn't know who he was when I picked this up, but that was a pleasant surprise. And we have the trio Jimi Hendrix albums. The Jimi Hendrix Experience. These are all from the Experience Hendrix reissue series from about 10 years ago. Really great all analog remasters, 180 gram RTI pressings. These all sound Fantastic. Really great versions. All right, I think that's a good place to put the bookmark for today. I have one more video to make, and I'll make that in the not too distant future so that it will come out just before the end of the year. We'll wrap up this whole series in this commemoration of the 10 years of making these kinds of videos on this channel, Vinyl Fury. So I hope you will join me for that. Until then, thanks for watching. Take care, enjoy your music.